Hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel Family Hub. In this video I will be explaining the second example of uh, loading and saving checkpoints. Um, in this video, I will, as I have said before, I will be explaining the ResNet 18. I will be saving this model and then loading it to the Udacity workspace for inference. Um, how to do that? Um, after you have trained and validated your model you will need to save um, to say you will need to save this checkpoint somewhere and to save that you will use torch.save here you can save the epo epochs you can save anything else you want like the optimizer the state dictionary which is basically the weights um, in this special case I had to save the class to index because we are classifying flowers and we save the name of the file so you can save it as I did if you want or as you wish uh, classifier resnet 18.pth as I said before pth file saves more than the state dictionary only while the pt file saves only the state dictionary after you uh, uh, click here and you run the cell uh, you will find your file here. You go here and then here you cannot see anything so you have to go to files. You just have to look for content and then inside content you will find the classifier as net 18. If you still don't find it just press refresh and I'm pretty sure you will find it. Then to download this right click press download this will take you to um, this will download the file to your downloads. Um, after that, now we need um, we just need to uh, load it. So in this special case, as I said before, because we are doing the PyTorch challenge for Udacity, we have to load it for inference in the Udacity workspace. Since they use um, CPU, they don't use GPU for the inference. We just need to do something small, so it's already explained in the uh, documentations for PyTorch that when you are using GPU and you want to move to load your model to CPU, you have to um, move it to the CPU. So this is done here. You can do it somewhere else, and I can t I will tell you where to do it um, if you want to do it in another way, just just in case. Um, so now if it's uh, trained on a GPU and you want to move it to a GPU, you don't need this line. If you have trained it on a CPU and you want to move it to a GPU, you can say model to device. That's it. And then now we go for loading in the Udacity workspace. You have to, um, before this, Usually, now we have downloaded our PTH file, right? We want to load it here. You can do it manual, um, automatically, like I said before, using the G drive. Yeah, but I didn't go that way. I prefer everything manually. So basically, after you download it to your downloads, you go to the Udacity workspace, press upload, and then choose your file, PTH file. And open. It will tell you how much file, uh, how much the size is. So we can see it's 43 megabytes. It's a little bit big, but yeah, we need it. So we press OK. Um, and then you uh, press upload. Um, as you can see, since I already have it here, classified as net 18 pth, and when I press upload, it will say that. You already have it. Do you want to replace it? I don't because I already have it. This might take a little bit. Uh, depends on your computer. And yeah, it, it will take some time, but not too much. Then we go to the test score and we put our loading function. So uh, for that, we will need to import the important stuff like tor and n, f and the models because we have used pre-trained models. I imported here some warnings, but it's not so important, so you can just 
commented not that's not that big deal and then um, we uh, do we define our loading function it's called load checkpoint it takes the checkpoint path and then we use store.load this one loads the file that you have the file or the path the file if you have it here on the workspace like we did together we uploaded or the path if you are using uh, G Drive so and here map location just um, I think I'm not sure what it does but it says that we can use a uh, map location equals CPU if you didn't use that line that line I used here you can just say here map location equals CPU like this CPU okay and then I think no need for this one then uh, after that we um, load the model it should be exactly the same one we used because um, the weights we saved are for that that model so it should be the same and we use pre-trained equals true if you have used uh, equals true in your training and validation now here we are freezing the parameters because we are doing inference and now we are um, so usually as you know uh, ResNet has in the last layer uh, a fully connected layer and we have replaced it with another um, classifier or or whatever you have changed so before it was an input feature of 512 and the output features were uh, were 1000 because they have uh, used it for ImageNet now we are using it for only 112 um, flowers so we have changed the model.fc which is here this layer model.fc we have changed it with, I have changed it with only one layer of the number of features which is the fully connected input features from here and made the output 112 because we are classifying 112 flowers and after you just if you want to see how that has been changed you can see it here now we have 102 um, so why am I saying this because um, here we re we have to repeat this process and um, um, make this layer again so we say model.fc equals the same exactly thing that you have used in your code it should match because um, the weights you have saved are the same weights that you are going to use here so they should match um, so you can pass and then um, load state dictionary you take the state dictionary from your checkpoint and here we have strict to false because sometimes there are some um, version differences between Colab and the Udacity so to be sure you just have to say strict equal to false put the model to evaluation mode because we are doing inference if you are doing training um, you put this to training so not not evaluation um, some people say it doesn't matter I am not sure but the documentation says if you don't want to mess up everything just put it to evaluation if you are doing inference um, and again inference means testing and you return the model now we call our um, load checkpoint function with the path path if you are using G drive if you have saved your file in the G drive and um, directly the name of the file if you have uploaded manually and here we have few things that are by default we, we leave them it's not a problem and just my in my opinion it's better to have a print line just to make sure that you have uh, finished downloading and finished everything um, some people have uh, been complaining that um, for example they have downloaded the model for the first time they have seen the, these two lines but then in the next time they don't see it anymore 
that's okay don't worry because you have already downloaded so it might be the case that it's not downloading again if you are very um, worried about this just uh, refresh and um, restart the kernel and run again and then uh, you will have um, you will be downloading the model and then it's done and now let's test the code it will take some time and we will be back together now as you can see the test passed model was scored successfully although I have only for the sake of um, saving time I have trained my model for only five epochs and still I got a good um, decent validation accuracy which is 94 percent which is pretty good so um, yeah I would recommend using ResNet because it's a little bit fast and you can get the accuracy um, from the f very few first ep epochs um, to sum up I will be just um, showing the steps that you have to do when you load the the checkpoint so after you have trained and validated you will save your checkpoint using torch.save uh, there you save whatever you want whatever you need in case you need it for training i prefer that you save the epochs in case you are doing inference it's enough to save the state dictionary and the optimizer if you want um, state dictionary will be enough so and then wherever you need the checkpoint to continue either on colab for training or in somewhere for testing you just um, call the loading function you can do it without a loading function but you just need to do the same step so uh, you have to redefine the pre-trained model exactly the one you used while training and validating um, uh, then you have to create the same classifier layer you used so in case of the resnet it was the last layer of the resnet was the fully connected layer which we changed it with a linear um, linear layer <laughs> uh, so you just change it with it if you have done if you have created a new classifier instead of the fully connected layer you just uh, say model uh, dot fc equals the classifier you, you made you either do an n sequential or you um, you d redefine the class all of it like i did in the first example with the vgg then you replace that last layer uh, of the pre-trained model by your classifier or by your linear layer then you load the weights by using load state dictionary then you either keep freezing your model parameters by uh, setting the required grad equals to false or unfreeze them by setting it to true that depends on whether you are doing further training or you are doing inference so in the case of uh, further training and you want to change your uh, pre-trained parameters you set it to uh, requires grad, grad equals true but if you are just doing inference you keep it to false like I said if you are doing inference you set your model to evaluate and if you are doing further training you set it to train um, just exactly like we do in the evaluation and training and then you return your model if you are using a function like we did in this example video so that was it I hope you liked the video and learned something like I did and um, please give me a like or subscribe um, I'm in the beginning of my YouTube channel so some encouragement would be great <laughs> I wish you all the best and see you next time Goodbye.